All right, party people, we are back for another video. We're getting close to the end. Area moment of inertia, composite shapes. This one's not symmetric. This is a little bit harder. Find IY prime. I called it something different this time. Instead of calling it IYY, I called it IY prime. Just to show you something different about the neutral axis, okay? So this time, instead of going on a horizontal axis, we're trying to find it on this vertical axis. And I'm going to say, I don't know where it is, but I'm going to say it's like, I'm going to say it's right there. Okay. And there it is. Okay. I'm going to put a prime on there because here's the Y axis and there's the X axis. So step one is going to be finding out where does that axis, that neutral axis, which is also called the centroidal axis. Okay. Where... Does that live? Well, I'll tell you where it lives. It lives right here. Wah. And what is that? That is X bar, okay? If you're trying to find Y, you got to find X bar. If you're trying to find X, you got to find Y bar, okay? So let's find X bar for this shape. Step one, we got to go all the way back to a centroid problem and do that guy. So um, what would you do? I think what I would do is make this into a big rectangle, right? There's a one big rectangle here and I'm going to subtract off a triangle and I'm going to subtract off that circle there because that would leave me with this shape here that I'm trying to find um, X bar four. So what I've got is I'll call the big triangle piece number, I mean, the big rectangle piece number one, the circle will be piece number two and this guy over here will be piece number three. Let's use our table method, okay? So one, two, three, And then we've got X, A, and X, A. Okay, all we got to do is fill that table in. And remember, garbage in the table, garbage out for an answer. So let's don't do that. Shape number one, where's the centroid? Okay, this thing is eight inches wide. And so the centroid is at half that, which is four. Okay. Shape number two, the circle. Where's the middle of the circle? Well, right where the dot is. Okay, and where does that dot live? Five inches over. Okay, and then shape number three, where is that guy? Well, it's at a third of the base. It's a triangle, right? But I got to go to the end, eight, and then subtract back a third of three, which is one. So eight minus one is seven. So there's my centroids. This is going to be easy, isn't it? The area is going to be, oh, Lord, have mercy. What is the area? 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 times 8 is 112 for the rectangle, right? And then times 4, that's 448. I knew that. Why did I put that in my calculator? Okay. So what's the area of the number 2, which is the circle? That's pi r squared, so here we go, pi times r squared is 2 for the radius, so 4. And that's going to be 12.57. Um, but is that area there? No, it's not, so it's going to be negative. Okay, and that times 5 is 62.83. Also negative, right? And then finally, a triangle. A triangle is one half base times height. The base is three, the height is six. Three times six is 18 times two, or divided by two is nine. And again, that area is not there. So subtract away nine minus 63. Okay, so here we go. Our sum of the A's is 112 minus 12.557. And then also minus 9, 90.43. And the sum of the X's is 448 minus 62.83 minus 63, 322.17. Okay, and here we go. X bar is equal to 322.17 divided by 90.43. Divided by 90.43, 
It's 3.56. Okay. So there you go. So this distance right here is 3.56 inches from that Y axis. Okay. How good is that gang? Now, if you don't understand that, right? If you just joined this video and you don't understand this, you need to go back and look at the videos on centroids by composite shapes, right? Very similar. This is a moment of inertia by composite shape, but go back and review those videos to see where that came from. If you got lost on that step and you haven't been following along and you need to go back and watch those other videos. All right, here we go. So that's step one, find out where the axis is. Step two is I'm going to do the moment of inertia for these one, two, three shapes and then add them together. Okay. The one thing I got to be careful of though is um, subtracting off these two shapes and I'm going to show you how to avoid disaster on those. Okay. We're going to use the parallel axis theorem. Do you remember the parallel axis theorem is? Okay. I, Y, Y, or this time it's I, Y prime. Not that it matters, but okay. Is equal to, um, okay. I, Y plus a D squared. Okay. So that's the parallel axis theorem. All we got to do is find out what goes in here. Okay. So let me get my book because we're going to need that, aren't we? Okay. So we have three different shapes here. So let's go over here to our centroid table, right? And I'm going to look for what three shapes do I have? I have a rectangle, which is 112 HB cubed. I have a triangle, which is 136 BH cubed. And I have, what else do I have? A circle, which is one fourth pi r to the fourth. Okay. I'm going to write those down up here just so we will know them. For the rectangle, 112 h b cubed. For the triangle is uh, 136. And for the circle, one fourth pi r to the fourth. Okay. And those are straight out of that table in the back of your book. Okay, to avoid confusion, I'm going to do one thing to you, okay? I'm going to leave that, no, I'm going to, I'm going to change this one. Okay? And maybe this, maybe this does make it confusing, okay? I'm going to leave it one third, uh, 112 BH cubed, just like we did when we did it around the X, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my whole framework here, okay? So what, when I'm looking for the base, for the X, this is the base. That is the height. But when you're doing Y, now this is the base, and that's the height. So if you just kind of rotate your brain 90 degrees, it's easier that way just to use the same equation every time. What I'm going to do is what used to be the base is now the height. What used to be the height is now the base, right? That's all I'm going to do is just rotate myself. And that way I don't get confused on these equations going, ah, okay? So here we go. I, Y prime is equal to, I'm going to have three parts, okay? I'm going to do them, the rectangle first, piece number one. Okay, so 112 BH cubed. So 112 and the base. Remember, the base is going this way now because we're doing Y. So the base is 14. The height goes this way, which is 8 cubed plus the area. Now, here's the cool thing. The area is already, we already figured all the areas. They're over here. One, one, two, and then D. What is D? Well, it used to be at four, but this is 3.56. So it's this minus that, and it gives you what? 0.44. Okay, and that's squared. Okay, so there's piece number one. That's the rectangle. That's the easy one, okay? So I'm going to do this, minus, and I'm going to bracket the whole piece number two, okay? Okay. Because I'm going to subtract that guy off. So what you do is you treat him like he's a positive, and then at the very end, we'll subtract him away. Okay? So what is the circle? The circle is 1 fourth pi r to the fourth. Okay? Plus the area of the circle, 12.57. And notice I didn't put a negative in there. I'm treating him like he's a positive area, and then I'm going to subtract the whole thing off, okay? Times D. What is D? 
All right. D is um, on 3.56 minus what? 5, right? 1.44. And there's the circle. This isn't hard, is it, y'all? Now let's subtract away the triangle, okay? Let's put the triangle bit in here. The triangle is 136. The base, what's the base? Remember, it rotates, so the base now is six. The height is three plus the area, nine times D, which is what? Seven. 3.56 minus seven equals 3.44. So most people mess up that distance D, right? How far is it from this line to that dot? How far is it from that line to that dot, right? Where the centroid of that is, right? And that's how you do that, okay? What's left to do? Just put this in our calculator and give me the answer. That's it. Okay? But my recommendation to you, put this in your calculator two times. And make sure you get the same thing both times because it's easy to mess this calculation up, right? So 14 divided by 12 times 8 cubed plus... 12.57, no, I'm on the wrong line. Did I see how easy it is to mess that up? 112 times 0.44 squared equals, all right, piece number one is 619.0. Okay, piece number two down there is going to be what? Um, pi divided by 4 times uh, 2 to the 4th plus 12.57 times 1.44 squared equals 38.63. And one more, 6 divided by 36 times uh, 3 cubed, and then plus 9 times 3.44 squared equals 111.0. So the final answer is 619 minus 36.63 minus 111 is 471.37. And that's the moment of inertia for that shape there, okay? So we got some different shapes. We had the subtract away trick. We had to find the centroid because the new, that's about uh, as complex of a composite shape you'll probably see on your exam. So now you know how to do it. There's no way you miss it, okay? We got one more video left, gang. Come on.